I have finally finished university after three years and I've got all of my work done. As much as I am happy, I am going to miss going to university because it has been perhaps the best experience of my life. Meeting so many awesome people, the parties, the girls, and of course you do learn a thing or two. This video is going to be a response to Sean's recent retardery and to give a bit of detail behind his behaviour. I will be discussing where his failures working with the Genesis movie project and Jews for Jesus stemmed from. In summary, this video is going to be covering the levels of narcissism and which characteristics Sean's behaviour replicates. As you can see from the table, there are five types of narcissists. The measurements used to determine each one is dependent on the levels of grandiosity, lack of feeling, lack of contact with reality, and lack of a sense of self. The first level is phallic narcissism. They tend to be self-confident, arrogant, elastic, vigorous, and like to portray themselves as impressive. They often interpret their skills and behavior as better, superior to everybody else's. They tend to focus their superiority, though, on their health and appearance. The best example of this disorder would be Narcissus, a character from a story from a Greek mythology, who fell in love with his own reflection and his own image. Level 2 is a narcissistic character. These individuals have a more grandiose ego image than a phallic narcissist. They are not just better, but the best. They have a need to be perfect and to have others see them as perfect. They tend to think too highly of themselves. The key distinctive characteristic is the person having a grandiose image of themselves being under the illusion they are the best, or in this case, a messenger or advocate of a god. For example, Sean now sees himself as a leader of creationists because he keeps insisting the conversations he would have with Thunderfoot and Jacqueline and anybody else can influence his followers and other believers in Christianity. Would it be cool if Venom, Fang X, and Thunderfoot had a cordial relationship and, and spoke to each other like human beings. What would that do to you two? Be a beautiful place. Beautiful place. That's what I'd like it to be. Anyways. Level 3 is borderline disorder. People who have this disability have a difficulty maintaining stable and close relationships, sometimes periods of loss of contact with reality and in some cases threats to harm others but themselves. For example, according to Sean in his, one of his blogs, he was suicidal at the age of 17 and revealed how he wanted to die at the age of 5. Moving along the spectrum, the distinctive characteristic in a psychopath would be a dramatic increase in grandiosity. A psychopath sees themselves as superior to everyone and tests their abilities by breaking the rules to portray their identity as above the law and show contempt for common humanity. However, acting out is not limited to just psychopaths. Individuals who suffer from borderline and narcissistic character disorder act out too. The distinction is the duration, antisocialness, remorselessness, and lack of feeling in the behavior whilst acting out. For example, in them during the Holocaust. So, the only explanation, the only possible explanation is they were under the cursings of Deuteronomy 28. Now, the question is why? Why, why, why? Well, we know they were expelled from the land as Deuteronomy 28 predicted would happen if they ever broke favor with God because they rejected Christ. It happened in the very century of Christ's crucifixion. That must be appreciated. You need to understand that they were in the land and then expelled from it in the very century that Jesus was crucified. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. This is what the Jewish scriptures foretold. So why did the Holocaust happen? The only explanation is because they were out of favor with God. And why? Because they rejected the Messiah. Why won't God heal amputees? Why, why should God heal amputees? He's the one that allowed you to lose your arm in the first place. So, why doesn't God heal amputees? Because they don't deserve their arms. We deserve to die. That's what the Bible teaches. Sorry if you don't like that. Misused people's trust, and even some people say I've misused their money when I was accepting donations for that short period. Um, I've tried to assure people that I didn't misuse that money at all and that I tried to use it for what I felt was for the reason people donated to me, which was to 
evangelize and make videos and upgrade my equipment and, and do that. But um, that, the $10,000 that I did raise back in 2008 or 9, it was, that's so many years ago. Anyways, I, know, I have a clear conscience about that. You said that you had cancer. Cancer is, in one sense or another, living cells. And so, why is eliminating cancer morally better than allowing it to thrive? Ah, blackmailer! You see, to threaten someone with a lawsuit, with an ultimatum, if they don't do this, I'm going to do that. You see that? Ah, blackmailer! The reason Sean has brought so much attention to the apology video he had to make was because it revealed him as a lawbreaker. This can restrict him from working with young people. As you can imagine, when the employers interviewed Sean and googled his name, that video came up along with a whole list of reasons why they should not employ him. The internet has scarred his reputation to get a respectable job. The end of the spectrum, furthest removed from health and showing clear-cut signs of megalomania, is paranoia. Megalomania is the obsession to exercise power or more specifically a delusion about their own power and importance. For example, as previously mentioned, Sean sees himself as a leader of creationists because he keeps insisting the conversations he would have would have an influence over his followers and other believers in Christianity. Seeing himself as special, having extraordinary powers and, able to dis and unable to distinguish fantasy from fact. By this stage, Individuals with par paranoia are extreme in their grandiosity, a marked discrepancy between the ego image and the actual self. The best example to demonstrate this form of narcissism would be Kent Hovind with how he practiced his position of power and tried to manipulate his audience to class groups who disagreed with him as Satanists. There are all kinds of people involved in this plan toward a new world order. The United Nations, the World Council of Churches, if you go to church that's a member of that, get out, okay? Council of Foreign Relations, CFR, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergers, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, the International Bankers, the Club of Rome, the Communists, the Socialists, National, NEA, National Education Association, get out of that bunch if you're in it, okay? Uh, now, uh, or ACLU or the Masonic Lodge. Most people in the Masonic Lodge don't realize what they're in. They think they're in a do-gooders club. And it won't be till it's too late when they realize, wow, this was a satanic organization. Sean is doing the same with the Catholics by portraying Hitler as a Catholic and not a Christian. Sean also portrayed himself as holier than the Pope and any other Catholic because they do not believe in his particular form of Christianity. If I were to give a specific medical diagnosis of Sean's behavior, I would say Sean is suffering from a condition called Antisocial Paranoia Personality Disorder. A link in the description will provide more specific information. What are the causes of narcissism? Health professionals believe it is a result from a combination of factors that may include biological vulnerabilities, social interactions with early caregivers, and psychological factors that involve temperament and the ability to manage stress. External sources such as drugs can impact on the individual's nerves to make decisions and can have long consequences on their perce perception abilities. A narcissistic personality disorder may develop as the result of a neglect or abuse and trauma inflicted by parents or authority figures during their childhood. This leads me on to my next point which has been raised by Phil Hill and you. The, your son was attracting a lot of attention don't think that would bother you much. Negative attention, as long as it's directed at hit your boy, I don't think you give a shit. Revealing of your boy's extremely distorted personality, crippled personality, you wouldn't care. But you would care if there was some kind of legal thing that might just reach the papers, because then you get tagged. The tar and the feathers fall on you, and that's what you care about. As soon as he mentioned the six ki sick kids hospital, a lot of us knew that it was only a matter of time. Because if that ever hit the papers, what would that do to your business? Wouldn't that be humiliating? 
everyone would know that you can't bring up a kid everyone would know that you bring up a kid to be some kind of reptile it would reflect on you you should have taught him how to be a man instead you didn't teach him anything he's so full of self-pity so self-centered and self-obsessed that he's the only person on the planet did you get too many phone calls at work about your son did you receive letters pointing you to internet addresses did people contact your competitors your suppliers your customers did they suddenly point at you and laugh at you and say hey your son's pretty crazy and only then only then do you tell him to shut down when you started to get the fingers pointed at you and the laughter directed at you if, if all that you've done is taken down his internet site you are perpetuating your crime and doing nothing to try and put it right you're just saving your own face and the potential humiliation of a newspaper article or getting a reputation locally which might damage your business but I suspect you're more worried about your name and reputation but by no means am I saying this is an excuse for Sean to behave like he has he is still responsible for his own decisions and actions lots of people have had decades for fathers and have done amazing things for the community if anything, they had learned from their father's mistakes and have contributed to individuals who are in similar situations. After my analysis of Sean's behaviour, I have a feeling this will be perhaps my last video response to him because he is of no threat or challenge to anyone anymore and has become a boring topic. To conclude, he is clearly unhappy, lonely and powerless and what he cannot stand is that he knows how it is entirely his own fault.